That's okay. And now you can begin and I'll start muting everyone. Okay. Welcome everybody to the Knitters Guild meeting on this rainy day, but we didn't have to drive to the library for a change, but uh, it's good to see everybody in, in their little places. And I did get to see a few people today at the library. So that was kind of nice. Um, I just had a couple of announcements. Um, one unfortunate, um, Sandra Humberg, who's a member, her son Chuck um, passed away recently. He suffered for two months with the COVID and that was, you know, something that is kind of nice to know, not nice, I don't say that right. It's good that she was able to communicate that so that we can all be informed and, and realize that it is, you know, a serious issue. Uh, fortunately, I don't know anybody that has it. So you kind of, it's just numbers in a way. But when you know somebody who's fought and you saw their story the whole way, it was, you know, nice that she was able to share his journey and as, as sad as it, it turned out. But uh, Sandra Humberg is in the directory. So if anybody um, wants to send a sympathy card, you can reach out to her. Um, speaking of the directory, if I can find mine here, everybody um, should have received a directory. We mailed those out on the 16th. Oh, you can't see it because I've got the goofy background. So anyway, uh, there's a membership directory that had all the um, current um, members and there were a few that requested that they not be included in the printed directory. Uh, there were a couple of errors that um, I didn't catch. So if anybody has a correction, just send me and I am or Beth the information and we will publish those in the November newsletter so everybody can print that page and put it in their directory. So that's all I have to say about that. Um, Sue wanted us to announce that the nominating committee for the next elections, in, which will be held in March, um, are gonna be, uh, she's, or she's looking for people to serve on the nominating committee. There's a few offices that um, uh, the people have expired as far, <laughs> that's not, that doesn't sound good either. The, their, their positions um, will not be, uh, they have served their two year position, so they will not be um, able to continue in that role, but some of them might continue in another role, but we will be needing people to serve in, in those offices. And that will be um, uh, probably included in the December newsletter. So people are aware of what offices and if you'd like to serve on the nominating committee, that'd be great. Uh, in the October meeting, uh, Sue said that it went really well. She's real pleased and that going forward, we're gonna be sending out a blast email for the, um, any of the meetings or the knit-ins, just to remind everybody, because uh, kind of that time kind of comes up on us all of a sudden, and we don't want to forget anybody. We don't want to forget the meeting, so uh, be looking for an email just to remind you, and it has the link, so that'll be nice for that. Let's see. I don't think there was anything else there, um, other than our business portion. We need to. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments about the minutes? If not, we will just, those are, are approved. And uh, the treasurer's report, if there's any questions on the treasurer's report, um, I guess I should see if anybody has their hands raised, no. If not, those will be submitted for audit. And uh, Mary might have a, a information on treasurer's report later on, but that's usually handled at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, for the administration VP, um, Katie wanted me to just say that the uh, Instagram followers are picking up all the time. We've got 86 followers. Um, I've actually not done Instagram and, until we had our, our guild Instagram. And if, in the back of the newsletter, if you're not on it, there's information that tells you how to get onto it. So you know, sign up because I've found some other interesting things. I sign up for CBS Good Morning and I get all kinds of information from, from that program. So, you know, you might want to check that out. And uh, I don't think there was anything else that Katie had. If there is, um, just let me know. Otherwise, we will move on to the education portion. Uh, Kathy Schoenlau, uh, you are up. Is Kathy with us? Hello. There she is. You had me muted. Um, we got uh, the presentation uh, Vicki Thomas put together for us. So that should be included with the link 
in our newsletter. Um, it's a two part presentation, but it's only about 20 minutes. So I think it's very reachable and very user friendly. She did a very good job. Um, and then we have ideas for social knitting with a game in December, which will include bingo. And there will be um, a card in your next newsletter, a bingo card. So just uh, just take be aware that when you look at your newsletter to, to look for that bingo card and then uh, you'll be able to um, follow along and play bingo. And then we have um, other things that came up. Um, Sandy Kulash at Notorious is going to be donating items to us. Um, she is going to be out of her building by the end of November. She has sold it to a man who um, is going to be using it as a um, comic book store and a meeting room for people who play games. Um, that's all I really know about that. But anyway, she's going to be out by the end of the month. And um, she's going to be do donating various patterns um, magazines, maybe some yarn, but she's got my number. She's going to call me when she's ready to do the donation. So I'll be picking that up and then um, delivering it to whoever needs to have it. I'm not sure. Um, I think that's all I have. Okay, so the next up on the agenda is me with community service. Uh, we had a very productive day with receiving hats. We received 368 kids hats, kids and adults, 48 chemo hats, and 36 baby hats. So our hat count da, 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 is 2,888 hats, and that's 83% of our goal. So, you know, that's, that's a pretty lot. That's, I was really happy to to see that many. Um, we will, we also received other charity items. We have six baby blankets, eight scarves, uh, fingerless mitts and a shawl. And I think that was it just from this month. So uh, the- you had, you had some shawlettes too. And the shawlettes. Okay, that, that bag, I didn't quite finish counting. I just kind of looked at them really quick. So uh, that's, um, a good total for our charity donations. We're not gonna be doing a drop off next month. We're gonna figure everybody's got their own holiday knitting to work on. So we're gonna just um, wait until maybe maybe in May. I mean, if anybody has a lot of donations they would like to, they can always reach out to me and I'd be happy to um, meet someplace or figure out a way. Same with yarn. If anybody is, you know, would like some charity yarn, we've still have some, even though we're not meeting. I'd be happy to, to meet up with you to either take your donations or to give you yarn or, and then we've still got some other hats that I'm gonna have to go back and see how many hats we have um, left, but we've distributed pretty many. We've got a, quite a, a long list of, uh, of charities that receive donations and continue to send me names of charities that people, you know, that you directly donate to because we're counting those too. So, um, I'll, con I'll count the, the hats through December, even though we're not receiving any, because I'll probably be getting some information about that. But uh, that was it for the, um, for the community service for the hat pickup. Um, something I forgot to say about, just to remind everybody that if you want to get a, um, a, a shirt, let me see if I can stand up, if this will work. Nope, wrong way. Here's my, my Land's End shirt. Here you go. I got a, a Land's End shirt with the Guild logo on it. And, I would suggest if you want to do something fancy with the colors that you call them, you can go online and pick out your item and select the colors. But if you want to make sure that your colors are different, the arch was one color, everything else was another color. I kind of wanted it to be two colors inside. So if you do want it like that, call them up and just say, this is what I want, just to make sure that you get what you want. But I'm really happy with the way it turned out. So if anybody's looking for a holiday present or a suggestion for somebody, just say, I'd like a, you know, a logo, you know, a shirt from Land's End because the shirts are really nice. Um, so that's, that's it for my community service. Uh, the next report is Mary Dale Bannister, VP of Communications. 
Did she, did she log back in again? She, she was just having unmuted something. my own self. There you go. Okay. <laughs> um, so Facebook is still growing for us. We have on our Facebook group, we have a total of 395 members. Of those 338 of them are active. So we've got a high percentage of people that actually post in there and, and work with it. I thought it was kind of cool too. I noticed there's one person from Brazil and there's one person from the United Kingdom. Hmm. I, I don't know, I just, I just thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> Um, YouTube is, and I can't hear anybody laugh or anything, so hopefully you thought it was interesting as well and you're just muted, so I can't hear that it's funny. Um, YouTube is also growing. We only have 29 subscribers, but we have a lot more viewers than that. Some of, many of our videos have 50 or more views, so some of you are out there trolling, and that's fine if that's how you want to do it, but there are some benefits to subscribing. One is that it's really easy to find new content if you're subscribed because you can just click on your subscriptions button and it shows you all the things you're subscribed to and it has a little red dot on it if there's something new. And you can also turn on notifications. So right next to the button that says subscribe, it's a great big blue button that says subscribe. Right next to that button, there's a little bell and if you click on that bell, it also gives you notifications when a new video um, is available, which is kind of nice if you don't look if you don't look all the time to know that it's there, so you know you can go get it. Um, unless anybody has any questions, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> oh, there's a question, Linda. Uh, she's okay, there. We go. Um, what what is the name of the guild on the YouTube channel? Greater St. Louis Knitters Guild. If you just search Greater St. Louis Knitters Guild, you will it will come up, and it's our logo will come up, just like Katie's got the picture out there now. Okay. So all you have to do is click on that logo, and there you go. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I could find it. All right, I'll mute again. We'll add that to another up if we do the next newsletter. We'll make sure that that. The YouTube channel is included on that information page. I didn't think about that one. It's a new one. Okay. Um, Treasures report, Mary Fisher, did you have anything else to add? I think she's there. Oh, she's muted. Hang on. Forget that. There you go. Um, we have. We have dues of um, in September of $187.07 and only one expense, and that was the Guild logos designed for the Langdon shirts. Um, and that expense was $103.56. Um, so that's, we don't really have many expenses now since we're meeting online. So uh, that's about all I have. Okay, Katie, do we want to do the program now and then do show and share? Is that how we normally do this now? If Katie's there. Or Mary, I don't know if Mary knows how to. Can you all, can you all hear me? Yes. Now we can. Okay, sorry. So I'm going to share screen for the program. Uh, it's in two parts. So I'm going to share the screen for part one, then I'll share the screen for part two. Um, if I can just get a thumbs up to know that you can see the shared screen. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> okay. And Katie, could you turn off the recording while we do this part? Of course. If anybody wants to try mosaic knitting, it's kind of fun. So that's a, a nice little washcloth size patterns and then you can kind of practice with that. I think it's garter, but uh, uh, I guess we will move on to show and share. I don't know if anybody has any anything to add. It's kind of hard to, let's see. Yep, Katie's gonna unmute everybody. So um, let's see, who wants to start with showing off their items? Mm. After we get unmuted. <laughs> Joan. Okay, Jean, what you got? Yeah, I'm, I uh, am not knitting anything right at the moment but I I got an attendance prize last time and it's so pretty <laughs> let's see if I can show it it's um it's called 
I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Sirdar Color Wash, S-I-R-D-A-R, Double Knitting Yarn, and it's huge. It's um, 500, let's see. Oh, where did it say that? Over 500 yards, machine washable. Um, oh, 568 yards. <laughs> and it's oh, got, keep you busy. <laughs> yeah, it's got yellow, orange, pink, purples, greens, aqua, and yellow. So it's, I started looking, I looked up the, um, the name of the yarn online on Ravelry and um, pulled it up and did pull up a couple patterns, but haven't start, haven't decided yet, but it's an amazing, it's huge <laughs> and really neat. So thank you. I think we ought to have uh, prizes for off. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really neat stuff. Yeah, thank so thank you, you Trevor. Uh -huh. yeah. Who else? I'm sure there's people been knitting already. What you got? Alice has got something on her lap. You gonna show up? <laughs> You're, you need to unmute. <laughs> this there is out of Marble Chunky. I just did a comfort shawl. Oh, and very, found it very off. pretty. Pretty. You know, just garter. So that's it. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> okay, who else wants? Lee, well, are you going to show us something? Diane. Diane, okay. Yes, unmute herself. There we go. Okay, I just, um, finished a pattern that I saw in Ravelry and fell in love with instantly called Patasco. And um, let's see if I can show it. It's got cables on one side. And then it's got, I don't know if you can see a coin stitch every 12 stitches after that. And um, I made it with um, Malib Rigo Rigo's um, Aquamarine. And um, it lays very nice. I can show you it's, let's see if I can. Nice, pretty. Yeah, well, that's gorgeous. Very pretty. Mm -hmm. And the yarn was perfect for this project, I have to say. So I will send that out, but that's, um, that's what I got. And then I don't know, um, Barry Fisher, if you're on. Um, yeah. I just started working on taking over your Afghan. Oh, wonderful. And I'd it's very that. pretty. Now, I do have a question. I've got a lot more stitches than it says I should. Did you make it bigger? Yes. Oh, okay, was, good. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be for my grandson who is going like a weed. Oh. I'm six foot tall and his dad's six two. Oh, so okay. Bigger, he's going to end up above that. So. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah. I was thinking, no, this is bigger than they said. You know, this is a lot more than 139 stitches. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> okay, but um, anyway, it's kind of fun to do. I haven't crocheted a big project in a while. Yeah, it is. It's a very, it's uh, from a book called 48 Hour Afghans. Oh, well, it'll it, take me longer than that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, it's, I've made four or five different patterns out of there. Oh yeah. Oh. I really like them and they are fairly quick. Not yeah. Yeah. Fairly quick, yeah. Hey, I'm going to check out that book. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. And okay anyone Tom. else? I have a quite, I have, it's Gracia. Can you hear me? Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I got a request if people will send a still photo of that to me or to post it so that I can put it in the newsletter for those who aren't sure. with us today. And, and the name of the pattern, I'm doing it phonically and I'm sure I'll never find it. So on Ravelry. So if you'd be so kind as just tell the name of the pattern, I've got who's doing it and uh, either send it to me or something like that. Just one still photo is great. Okay, and um, I think I sent you one last month, Gracia. 
Yeah, I did. I got it. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I actually saw it on show and share. So um, I'll send this one too. Okay. If okay. I miss any, just let me know. I, I Now I've got to glean it from a bunch of sources. So I get a little confused. Oh, okay. Hi, this is Nini. I see Ursula Bauer is knitting something extremely colorful and I'd love to see what it is. <laughs> well, what the rest of it is. Ah, it's an old blanket out of Noro yarn, and I'm still finishing it. Wow. So it's the end of the. It's very old. Oh, great colors. <laughs> yeah, it's Noro yarn, so it's always colorful. Yeah. yeah. But this is the right side now. This. Oh, pretty. Mm -hmm. Ready. Yeah. Anybody else? I know there's got to be some, but Gerda's working on something over there, but she's maybe. <laughs> I don't have a picture of it, yeah. but I'm, I'm working on a um, new baby blanket called Graphite. G R A P H I C. It's on Ravelry. Um, it's like top and light gray stripes, like um, mitered squares, but the, the corners are all different colors. It's really pretty, it's very handsome. It would be a good Afghan for a baby boy. Have something. Oh, that's cute. Oh, very that's pretty. Very cute. Wow. Well, that's showing one. a... The other one is not quite finished. <laughs> Very pretty. Pretty colors. Is that one of your designs, Lynette, or is that something that you've oh, found? Oh, partially, some? but uh, the, the bottom part was a uh, pattern that we learned at the Affinity Knitting Workshop that May and I went to. Well, we didn't go. We stayed home. <laughs> <laughs> we stayed home for it, but it was fun. <laughs> I enjoyed that a lot. Nice to hear they're still trying to do workshops remotely, that they're still well, it available. A, it was a three day workshop. And there's a lot of stuff going on. Was Who was it with Lynette? Uh, May, are you there? I'm trying to think. Patty Lyons. Ah. And she had three other people that were there teaching. And then she had a whole lot of people that were selling five or six selling things if you wanted to buy something. It was fun. I remember going out to eat with my phone and my ears went, <laughs> I'm watching <laughs> 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 How many hours a day was it? Um, it started, and you can you could join parts and parts of it, but it started with Saturday afternoon. Well, for, actually, Thursday night, they checked out whether you could get on or not. Friday night was a game thing that was kind of fun. I don't can't tell you what it all it was. Saturday, I took a class. And Sunday morning, I took another class. That was when we did the Fair Isle or whatever you call it, um, two colors. And then, so it wasn't all day. You could do all day if that's what you wanted to do, but you didn't ha have to do it. It was fun. It was actually a, a one that I wanted to go to that was in Maine that got canceled and I didn't get on it. I got on the waiting list and didn't get on at all. And then they did opened it up for virtual, and I, I did it. It was a lot less money virtually. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have to fly to Maine or drive to Maine and stay for three days. It is a I very have a long drive to Maine. <laughs> I would love to do it. But <laughs> I have a project. Gracia, it's my very first pair of socks. And I, what you see with me, or if you've been ill looking at my picture, I'm trying to figure out how to put them on my feet and show you, but I just hold them up. They turned out, 
this is my very first pair oh. and the yarn was crazy expensive and I thought it was going to be more subtle and when I realized it wasn't going to be very subtle <laughs> I call them my basement socks and if you can see it's the plain vanilla pattern but I decided to add a toe for my flip-flops because my feet get so cold <laughs> <laughs> and nobody socks this way so I try not to answer the door in them because you know they're just ridiculously wild but it was fun and I hope to get better at socks Oh gosh, it's they're good. very warm and very comfortable, but like boy, it. they hurt your eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love them. <coughs> Anybody else? I know there's more people knitting out there than that. I'm going to start calling on people. <laughs> <laughs> You're all looking at something. You're not. We're all you know. we're all working on our Christmas projects. I know. We got it. Yeah, no secret. Okay. <laughs> Lee, what, do you, what are you working one. on? Ooh, I could do one. Eileen. Oh, cute. Eileen, yes. This is my <gasps> own Christmas project. This is for my granddaughter. <gasps> it's beautiful. <laughs> yes. Can you show that again, Eileen? Yes. It's yeah. um, called Luxury Lined Headband. Okay. It's oh. just beautiful. Um, and it's for my daughter who has a golden retriever that she walks. Wow. If Harith, if Harith were here, she'd recognize him because she walks in the neighborhood. This has <laughs> a, a lining uh, that's made from a, a baby alpaca. Whoa. A skein yeah. of yarn I bought like 10 years ago for some extraordinary price and I've never found a way to use it but for a lining for this it's it's gorgeous I just sit and pet it on my table all the time <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be sad to see it go to its new home <laughs> you'll have to make one for yourself <laughs> I know. beautiful absolutely beautiful mm, thank you I'll go uh, I'll have to chime in with the baby hat theme I meant my for my grandson my daughter asked for a speckled fawn hat I haven't gotten to the ears that's next oh. so it's kind of oh. similar to your thing Lee but a little bit different it's going to have like the brown ears with the white inside so wow. that's yeah. what I'm doing <laughs> send photos send photos <laughs> I've been very busy making baby hats I made a pumpkin hat and then an ear flap hat and she wants another ear flap hat in a different color. And then, oh, stocking caps uh, she wants me to make for the baby. So that, that's what I'm working on is hats. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. Yes. Although I'm it's actually looking big as I'm holding it up. It's hard to figure. This is a four-year-old pattern with the head circumference of 19 and a half inches. And he's, well, he was seven months yesterday, but his head circumference is 18 and a half inches. So. Oh, oh. whoa. Wow. He's green. It's a place for all those brains. <laughs> stretch on it. Very good to me now. I'm gonna, I might try it on him before I actually attach the ears. Save myself some trouble maybe, yeah. It just seems ridiculous that I'm making using a four year I have a picture of that baby blanket I'm making. Come on. Go this way. I have Anybody one more. Else have Gracia. I, Gracia has one more. I, I've Yay. stopped the eye here. Okay. I have. Um, are you catching me? Yeah. Okay. Can you see me? Yep. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I can't. Oh, there. I, little ornament socks. I got a little oh, pattern off Ravelry, which I've really enjoyed. I like Fair Isle. Can you see it? Can't and see it. this will be for a little club, a group of club ladies who I belong with. They don't knit. So they'll think it, they'll be wowed. But I think, so I didn't, this wasn't my first pair of socks, I guess. But they've been <laughs> fun to do. Do them on an afternoon. Oh. Then we'll stuff them with candy. Uh -oh. <laughs> mm. 
And that's my story. <laughs> you sticking to it? Yep. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I have one to share if 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 it's time. It's time. Oh yeah. I made a Christmas stocking. <gasps> oh, oh, cool. wow. okay. it's, it's my first one. It's hard to show on a phone, but and it has reindeer. Oh, oh, oh it's it's cute. Cute. so it was it was fun. I just finished it up yesterday and is that duplicate stitch or is it? Um, uh, no, I did. Um, yeah, in terms in, of. In, yeah. In, in terms of. Is that yeah, what lots, lots of videos. And I think I was concerned about, I was concerned. I think next time I might do duplicate because I feel like it's loose. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Then you could fit more presents in it at Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> and yeah, then I'm knitting a. That way. I'm knitting a hat, which I just did a tubular cast on, which was the first time I did that, but it actually worked out really nicely. Hmm. So there's no real edge to it. Well, that's me. That's what I've been doing. Go on. I'm, I'm working at Mitten. <laughs> oh, cute. And it's just the Ann Buzz Handy Book of Patterns Basic Mitten. Oh, okay. So, some general wool yarn that my daughter in law gave me. I have no. <laughs> there any other show and share? If not, we can just chat. I'm, I have just been doing it I, anyway. I just I'm finishing up the last of my charity ads to donate. And this is, can you see me? This is yep. the CC beanie. <laughs> That's a nice hat. That makes a nice warm Yeah, hat. I, so this is, I'll be wrapping that up and then that'll throw, go into my charity bag and then I got to start my Christmas in the egg. <laughs> Hi, this is Nini again. Uh, a while ago, Ann Consen went to the, the Shetland Sheep Festival, and she said one thing she found out when she was there is that the women would hand knit the yokes, and then they would machine knit from the top of the sweater down, because that was just the plain knitting boring part. So I logged that piece of information away in my mind, and I decided I wanted to work on this pattern called Calalock which is like a boxy. It's a big thing, but it's in the round. And then you end up at the top with like a lace type of yoke with different lace patterns. And I thought, I'm not gonna do like 362 stitches all around <laughs> just to get up to the yoke. That would take me forever. So I worked out a swatch on the knitting machine and I knit it in pieces. Now I've pieced the pieces together. I had to do the front, the back, and um, the sleeves, part of the sleeves. Yeah, the sleeves. So now I'm working up by hand and that saved me a lot of time. I, we'll see how it turns out. It's not done yet. Okay. Nice. That sounds beautiful. It's an experiment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> huh. That everybody's quiet today. Yeah. I'll show you what I'm doing, but it's not as fancy as everybody else's, but I've been playing with patterns and um, this is a dishcloth. I'll see if you can see it. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. nice. It's mm -hmm. a different pattern I've never done, but a friend of mine sent it to me. It doesn't even have a name, but she thought it was cool looking. So I, I'm just making some dish claws right now. Yeah. Those are always nice projects for this time of the year anyway, because yeah. they use up scraps and they are fast mm -hmm. and you can use it as a last minute gift if you need to. 
Yeah, and I, I like trying different patterns, so this allows me to do that. This is Flora. Flora. That's what I'm doing, Christmas dishcloths. Christmas you know, The red, white, red, yeah. green, and uh, white pattern. Can you mm -hmm. see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. I'm finishing up um, pulling in the ends on a little baby bib. Oh, that's so, pretty. I don't remember when I started this, but it certainly was time to finish it. So that's what I've been doing. <laughs> and I find a good that a washcloth is a really good project for waiting in the car or doing something like that when right. you can't move around very much. Mm -hmm. So I've got a couple done. One I turned into a baby bib instead of a washcloth, just to <laughs> see if that would work. But yeah, it's good. So when you do the baby bib part, do you just add, pick up stitches on one end and just add it? Yeah. So I actually, I bound this off one time when I found it again and I thought, oh, I'll just make that into a washcloth. And then I realized that no, the bottoms are curved. <laughs> so I'd better undo that and go ahead and make one. So that's what I did. But I also knit another one um, according to Hoyle, you know, it actually was a pattern and it showed sort of like the, the top around the neck was like this. And so it's not perfect. <laughs> I had to do some, um, what was it, make one left and make one right, I think it was. And so one side's a little more generously proportioned than the other, but it still works. So it's sticking with it. And then I crocheted a daisy for the front of it. It's a bright pink. And so that was fun. I, I would, you know, if I did it again, I would certainly practice those um, new stitches more than once. I, I did them once and then ripped them out and then did them a second time and thought, well, that passes anyway, but I'd like to get to a point where, you know, it doesn't look like, oh my, who made that? <laughs> do, you, do you put a button on the one side then? How yeah, do do it? I didn't bring the button downstairs, but it's gonna be right there. And this is what I don't think I'll do again is because it, it pulls a certain way when you're knitting mm -hmm. all the way across. And then I wanted it to pull the same way up on the strap. So that's why I've got all these hanging <laughs> threads. So I would avoid that in the future, but yeah, it's got a buttonhole. There it okay. is. And, and I found the button in my big box of buttons. So it should be okay. It's cute. Cute. I made one years ago that was just a square, but you could use it like that. You could be a washcloth and you used an I-cord and you had like a knot on the ends of each of the, you know, the ends and uh -huh. you put it through. So, you know, because you don't want it to be tight. So, I mean, you don't want it to be so that it's not able to come off fast if, you know, <laughs> choke yeah. the baby, but yeah, I've never, you know, had a baby to, to test them on. So I never knew what, what really works or what's practical, but the, yeah. um, but the little, the little I-cord thing, it was long enough that you could kind of tie it in a knot and then it looked like a little man and the baby could use that to chew on, you know, not that you'd want to leave them alone with that either. But anyway, it was, it was the pattern and it, it looked like a cute idea. But again, I didn't know if it, I needed a baby to, <laughs> a yeah. test baby. <laughs> it's definitely a guessing game. You know, how big is a baby's neck? Depends <laughs> mm -hmm. on the baby. I have something I forgot to share. This is a part of a sweater. Somebody oh. donated it. And the person who picked it up from Charity Charity oh. didn't want to finish it. So all of the yarn and the pattern and two sets of needles are in it. If wow. somebody would like it. Just send me an email. Hmm. Ready? Is it the yarn that makes the loops, May? It's a yarn that has different oh, thicknesses okay. and has different mm -hmm. things in it. Hmm. So, hmm. yeah, there is stripes on it with a different color oh. as well. 
<laughs> but it isn't like trying to knit your own poodle or something. Yes. No. <laughs> 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 Everybody's quiet again. Yeah. I need to check on Joni with all that coughing. Oh, you know I always cough. 24 7 year long. It's allergies. I had to give you a hard time since it picked up on the audio. <laughs> you are not sick. Actually, I want to correct something that I think I heard in the mosaic video. I thought I heard her say that you slip the stitches on both sides, on the right and wrong side with the yarn in back. And that is not correct. Um, whether you're knitting, whether you're doing stockinette stitch or um, garter stitch, if you're on the right side and you slip a stitch, the yarn is in back. And if you're knitting on the wrong side, whether you're knitting or purling, you slip the stitch with the yarn in front. Right. She said that. I, oh, I thought she said that on the wrong side, you slip the stitch with the yarn in back. I think well, she, she demonstrated it. what would happen if you did that. If you're doing a stockinette. I thought she said if you're doing stockinette, then you slip the stitch with the yarn in back. And that that's not correct. Maybe I heard her wrong, but that's what I thought she said. She was, she showed us the wrong way, showing us the loop that would be created if you did it with the, oh, slipped the then I heard her wrong. Yeah, when you slipped it on the wrong side, you had to um, put the yarn in the, in the, in front. the front. Yeah. Does okay. it usually say that if you're looking at a pattern when, you know, when it's written out, will it usually say with yarn in front slip or hopefully it does? You yes. know, I usually say, you know, if you're knitting in the round, then your yarn is remains in the in back. But I it should say on the instructions that you slip with yarn in front or yarn in back, depending on which side you're knitting on. Yeah, I'm still going to try to get to one of those mosaic knitting shawls. It's been in my queue for a while. And it's a garter stitch, you know, it's the one that we did as a knit along within yeah. the last couple of years. I just never got to it. It's fun. Yeah. I really enjoy it. I like doing the washcloth. I know, I don't know if Lee's got her table, her placemats, but she made some, what, four yeah. placemats? Yeah, she she, made, she based yeah. it on the washcloth pattern. Yeah. Yeah, because Vicki, that's what Vicki and I did a few years ago. Mm hmm Yeah. That was nice. I like that one. I think I gave it away, like everything else. <laughs> so I don't <laughs> I have to make another one. But that was fun. Maybe I should start with that again and then move on to the shawl. I've made a lot of kids' hats using that hat, you know, using mosaic. I just have a a book of different mosaic patterns and I just add them into a hat depending on stitch count. It's fun. I've never thought about in the round because everything that I you know was looking at was all flat. So works well, the same. You just keep repeating. You don't have to go back and forth on your pattern. You just yeah. keep the same row pattern. Kathy, Kathy Schoenlau has a hat that's I knit in mosaic in the round. <laughs> I have a hat. <laughs> yeah, the turquoise She's one. thinking. The turquoise one. Oh, okay, okay. It's a lot easier if you're doing stockinette because in the round it's all knitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Curling and yeah. So it's the same thing. You could do two rows of, of one and, yes. two, and then two rows of the other color. Yeah. I have to find that.
You're muted. Oh, Alice, you're muted. You're muted, Alice. I'm going to pop out. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, Thank thanks, you. Alice. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a safe trip. Oh, Alice. Yeah, Have a safe night. trip. Yeah. Okay. Bye, Have Alice. a safe trip, Alice. So is anybody plan on traveling this year anywhere? Right. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm Stay traveling home. to Hillwood. <laughs> yeah, Thea, aren't you traveling? I might make it to the grocery store. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I did that today. I needed one thing and I ended up buying a turkey and some other stuff just because they oh. had something that the size I needed. Did they put the turkeys on sale yet? Yes. Well, I, I got a sale price, whether they'll get any cheaper, but it's hard to find something that's not so big that it won't fit in my pan. Yeah. And it might not, my kids might still say that, you know, I have a family of four to feed and you'd think I was feeding an army, but I'll make soup out of the, you know, the carcass and we'll eat, I've eaten, never, I've never had leftovers, or you know, not leftovers, I've never had it go to waste. It's all gone into soup or, you know, leftovers for lunches for the next few days, so. With, with the with upcoming lockdown again, the things yeah. that uh, MEC is projecting as shortages are mm -hmm. stuffing and spices. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. spices. I guess because yes. of the, the holiday. Well, I mean, as soon as they say that, there will be a shortage of those. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> is Missouri shutting down again? Yeah. Well, yeah. The first so far, we're not, but who knows? Our numbers are going up. Our numbers are out up way up yeah way yeah. up and they are imposing We're lockdowns down. on what tuesday i think yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. st louis county does st. st louis city hasn't said yet but uh, i don't know about the rural areas they've pretty much been not not as strict yeah. no, uh, the, no none, none of the missouri is required to wear a mask so that's part oh. of it no yeah, our governor we are we are our governor Put in masks a couple of months ago. Your governor it's must fire. have a brain. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But <laughs> fortunately, <laughs> the people don't. <laughs> I still see people not wearing masks. masks. But you know what? They sure come to St. Louis now that their hospitals are full. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man. Yes, yeah I think they're going to be stopping like, uh, uh, I think they're going to be stopping like the elective surgeries. And I think. Well, well, much by the end of next week, the hospitals are going to be full and uh, hospitals you know, not good at all. Be taken Some COVID. hospitals have already stopped having uh, elective surgery because I have a friend mm -hmm. who came up from Florida expecting to have <laughs> uh, knee surgery. Um, and uh, by the time she got here and <laughs> saw her doctor, he said, I'm sorry, we're just going to have to wait it out. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. No elective mm -hmm. surgery. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think they're mm -hmm. up yet. Yeah. Are they bringing in the National Guard again for... Uh, I hope they do. ...to assist? So. Yes, yes, and there's a uh, medical tent on the way. Wow. We're going to need them. But they don't have the staff. Too many nurses and doctors have well, put... Because they're still burned down. The army, the army is already at SLU's emergency room. Are they helping because of short staff? Okay. Hmm. And um, in Ohio, they started letting people go in to visit at the nursing homes and care facilities like two weeks ago. And my dad's a resident at a memory care facility there, and. Um, Anyhow, they hadn't had any uh, residents with COVID until, like I said, two weeks ago, visitors allowed in and supposedly the visitors were being screened and all that. But I sometimes think people will have a cough mm -hmm. and they'll think, oh, it's just an allergy and they want to see their loved ones. So they go in anyhow. Bottom line, my dad now has tested positive for COVID oh, and they have oh, yeah. eight other residents there as well wow. um, in quarantine. And he has Louie body dementia. And, mm -hmm. you know, this is just really... Not good. No. I'm sorry. Oh, like, one of my clients what? notified me I was supposed to work with him on Monday, but we have been working um, virtually. Uh, but he went to visit his mother 
in a facility in Springfield and came back with COVID. Oh. Uh, and he uh, has some special medical problems and it's going to be rough for him. I'm praying that his case will just be light. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's what I hope for my dad. His temperature was over a hundred yesterday and his oxygen oh. levels were down. And then today his mm -hmm. temperature had come down a bit with Tylenol. And I FaceTimed with him. Um, he was awake for all of 10 minutes this morning, but with his dementia, he doesn't mm -hmm. know who I am. And he just doesn't understand what's going on with him. But they have um, two aides at the where he stays that just love him. And they volunteered to go into quarantine with him so that he won't be by himself, that one of them will be with him all that's, the time. So oh boy, that's, that's nice. really amazing. Are you, is he allowed visitors? No, like I said, two weeks ago, not now. And he hasn't had any visitors since this all started. Um, matter of fact, you know, my mom had died in April and he didn't even know, you know, that she's passed away and um, nobody's been in to see him until two weeks ago. Um, and they were limiting it, but as soon as they started that, and like I said, now they have nine residents and they've been able mm -hmm. to keep it with nobody getting it by not allowing visitors. And now two weeks later, you know, just. So a visitor brought it in. Brought it in. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guess what happened? I moved out to Gambrill Gardens last month and it's like over 400 apartments for seniors. The average age is 85. They did not have a single case until last week because they were shut down. I mean, literally locked down and they just bring your meals to you. Hello. And then it, no cases until Hello. last week after they opened up for October. So and well, hopefully they stop the spread of it. Well, we're back on lockdown for the most part. Does that mean you can't leave your apartment? No, I can't. I can go down and do laundry and stuff like that. And I do leave to go to the bank and the um, uh, post office for the guild. But I don't meet with anybody when I do that. I just go to the post office box and get the mail. And then I go to the ATM and deposit checks. Yeah. It's not Mary, like I'm interacting this, with people. Is this at your new place where you're just moved yeah. to? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Yeah, no, one, no. Of them, one of our members donated hats today and said that both of her sons got COVID and they're grown up, so, but they are both working, you know, so yeah. they think they got, they got it at work, but neither one of them has, has gotten really serious, um, you know, uh, symptoms and they were able to isolate at home with their families, but to have both of them, she said she was just really worried. Yeah. Oh God, yes. Yeah, it's scary because um, my daughter, somebody she works with had tested positive and she's in healthcare. So Monday morning, um, my daughter was also tested. So then we had to decide while waiting to see what to do with my grandson. So even though he had been with, you know, his mom, my daughter all weekend, I, I then took him thinking, you know, oh my, if he, if he already has it now, I'm also, but I took him and kept him overnight until the results came back, my daughter does not have it thank goodness <laughs> what, what hospital does she work for um she's at um barnes jewish the, in um was that forest park area yeah oh big big barnes on king's barnes highway yeah yeah <laughs> that's what we do now yeah well i think i told some of you too that i had a friend and her husband who got covid and she has als and he had stage four lung cancer Ooh. they both survived Lee is now home and Sue's in a nursing home and hopefully will come back by the, go home by the end of next week. Wow. I know. Sue was so fortunate. I cried when I heard because I thought, you know, um, I thought that was it. And I, you know, she's like one of my best friends from school. So. One of my friends got this back like in April when it, you know, first all started and mm -hmm. I keep forgetting her age. She's um, a writer friend of mine and she's, I think she's probably 86 now, um, but she got it and she didn't get the respiratory. She ended up getting like a stomach thing uh, where she couldn't eat and she had zero energy. Uh, they recommended she not go into the hospital for fear, you know, it would end up being worse for her. Um, but she 
had two nieces, I guess, that were younger and already had it. So they were able to come into Lundy's mm -hmm. house like once a day, tried to help feed her. She said it was all she could do to get a bite in, keep it down. She had zero energy, had trouble, you know, stairs, everything. She had it actually for 40 days. Um, she had it and she said it's the absolute worst thing. And she won't, she's super cautious now. I mean, she, I mean, she recovered, she's super cautious because they still don't know if you can get it again positively. Mm -hmm. And she says she just doesn't want to ever go through anything like that again. Well, and several people have gotten it again too. Mm. Not, not, not in Missouri that I've heard, but elsewhere in the continental US, they have gotten it again. Yeah. Hmm. After recovering the first time. Yeah. There is more than one strain of it out there now too. So oh, yeah. I didn't know that. I don't mm. know if you're more likely to get a second one if you uh, had the first one or or what, but well this newest yeah. strain originated in Russia and it's more deadly and it's more, much more contagious, like 10 times more contagious than the one we had. So that's probably what we have now. And that's why it's spiking so badly. What we have now is a lot of people got tired of wearing their masks and decided yeah. to go out and have a good time and play around and take their oh. masks off and hang out with their friends. That's mm -hmm. And teenage kids have these parties that end up with 200 teenagers mm -hmm. and then they they get it and then they come home and give it to their moms. My beautician, she did not get it from her daughter, but the beauty shop, because she'd been exposed, they closed the beauty shop down for a week and a half. Yeah. And around here, oh, I would say around here, the problem is not so much the teenagers, it's family groups having big, gigantic, family parties with 50, 60, 70 people who are not like in each other's pods. Like they might not see them. So now they're spreading it that way. Sometimes when they come over, um, depending upon what the problem is, they may tell us, well, is it okay if we disconnect the appliance? But what was that? Somebody was talking on the phone. Oh, <laughs> somebody <laughs> unmuted. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know we're being cautious, and yeah. we we're planning on going to Gaithersburg for Christmas because my daughter and her fiance are isolated as well. So we're isolated; they're isolated. So, and we're not we're going to drive straight through and not use a hotel. Um, so you know, we're just planning on being isolated with them, I guess you could say, you know, mm -hmm. but I don't think we're under a great deal of risk because they're isolated and so are we. So, um, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to take off now. Everybody take care and I'll see you next month. Okay. Bye thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. 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 Mary. Bye, -bye. Yeah. Did John leave too? I'm still here. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> uh, Katie had to sign off too. So, um, Mary, um, I'm Mary Fisher. I'm going to have to have you help me when we're done to close up the meeting. Okay, just you're the host so now. That, no, no, I'm not closed. I just when we do, I don't know if it's still being recorded. If you can stop the recording or how that. It, it yes, has, it is still being recorded. You want me to stop yeah. it for the discussion? Okay. If it will let me, I might. You might have to be. The host has, um, Katie has to do it. She's okay. So I guess if we, when we all drop off, it'll just automatically stop recording. I hope, I guess there won't be yeah. anything to record. And I can edit it and edit out this part. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know anything about that. That's, that gets a little Katie, bit too. And Mary Dale Bannister know all about that stuff. Yeah. Don't ask me. <laughs> I don't want to know. Well, I had a meeting the other day. It was a through Zoom, but was was through church. And I I get on and it's like I thought I was supposed to be the host and I didn't have the password. And I tried passwords that I had. And I thought, 
I don't know how to do this. And someone else had their own Zoom account. And I said, well, we might need you to do this. Well, luckily the pastor got on and he was the host. It's like, well, that's good yes. because I don't know anything about being host for, for these meetings unless I would set it up. But yeah, you know, we don't, you know, I usually just tag on to what somebody else said. So up. they made you the host? I don't think they did, but I wasn't sure. If the you pastor have couldn't have made it, then I would have had to be the host and we would have just had everybody sign up through, you know, sign up through another girl's Zoom account. Is there you can tell? Down and in the next corner, there's that red leave button, you know, for leaving the meeting. Yeah. If that says end, you're the host. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> too late we couldn't get in to know that if i could leave or not so it Does just it said it's end? waiting it, it was like waiting for the host to start the meeting it's like okay well am i the host because i asked her to set it up for me <laughs> so we but the next time i said we won't have another meeting till january but at least the next time i do it i'll have to say are you making me the host? And if so, what what passwords? Because it's not the password that everybody uses that's joining, because you know, we know that one. It's the host login password information. It's like, okay. Well, actually, I started the meeting today because I was the first here, but then I you transferred it over. Katie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey Joan. Yeah. I did not get a uh, members, um, you didn't get a directory. No. Make sure you're up, you're of good standing. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm never in good standing with anyone. But <laughs> I was gonna say you should be on. Yeah, you should have gotten one. So I I've got more. Hold on I, to I'm it just... and give it to me when. Because you haven't you. moved, so it should be all right. You know when yeah. you hand out when you give out your give me your your hats from Thornhill. Yeah. I'll bring one with yeah. me and maybe yeah, bring bike between. Bring yeah, you should. Too. I'll double check my file to see if for some reason, but yeah, I just merged it with the same list that I did the directory and you're in the directory. So yeah, should no, be I, good. Didn't, I haven't gotten it yet. Well, you might get it this week. Because mm -hmm. A lot of people got them pretty quick. You know, the post office, you know, certain areas are not as reliable. Anymore, I think I have a I'm dyslexic mailman. We always get our mail after dark and, yeah. you know, it, lots of times the mail's confused with the neighbors and, and it's just weird. <laughs> well, it's in a white envelope that's about as big as a directory, but it was yeah. fat. So, you know, if it got hung up in something, that would be, but we, I kind of was going to try to get it done before October. And then with all the political mail, I thought yeah. that doesn't make a lot of sense. Let's just wait. And we sent it out, to, you know, yeah. Friday after the election. Because I know even at work, we were having a tough time getting mail. And, you know, we'd get our business mail at 4.30, 5 o'clock, 5.30. Mm -hmm. You can't run a business getting your mail at the end of the day. Now, are, are you going into work or are you working remotely? I'm work, I'm going into work. Um, I'm trying to take at least one day off a week or not go in one day. They may change that. I may have to go back to working remotely, which is fine. You know, I'll just... I, I did it from March until July, late July, late June, July sometime. I thought but, you were uh, part-time. Well, I was supposed to be, but it seems like there was so much work to do. I never had a chance to take off. So, and when you're working from home, you're never not working. Yeah. You know, it's five o'clock and you just keep, if you've got work to do, if you don't have anything, but it's like, well, what time is it? It's just, it's just different. You just feel like you've never not at work. Yeah. yeah, but uh, when you've been no. working at home as long as I have, you definitely <laughs> know that at five o'clock you don't answer the phone. Yeah, and you <laughs> shut your computer down. Yeah, <laughs> you, you shut the door. Shut yeah. the door to your office and everything. Clients. Well, I don't have that problem because my husband lives in the other end of the house with his computer, so <laughs> don't have that problem. But if clients know that I'm working, then I'm available to them. And if I don't answer the phone, then they're on their email and wanting urgent care or something or other. <laughs> so and I, as far as 
Kathy, as far as getting the mail mixed up in the delivery, I live on Media Drive and the house, we're only a one block street. The house at the end of the block, if it wasn't there, it would, you could put a road through to Media Court. And Media Court, and every time we get a new postman, Media Court and Media Drive are forever. And there was a period of time where we accused them of not giving new letter carriers reading tests. So we have had, we have had uh, appliance delivery show up at Media Court and then call and say, but you're not here and you're supposed to be here. And we have to explain to them, well, you have to go back. You're on a circle, aren't you? And they say, yes. And they say, well, you're at the wrong media. You're at media <laughs> court and we're at media drive. And then we have to tell them how to get around the block. <laughs> and this goes on. It goes on the other day. Somebody came. They had arranged to buy from the people at media court to buy something on eBay and so they were to meet them at a certain time and they were they showed up at our house and couldn't understand they were sure well they just wrote down media they didn't write oh, yeah. right I always when I leave my address for anything I say make sure you have the drive on it yeah but somehow people that still doesn't register with even emphasizing it several times. Yeah. Joan, I'm going to add a couple hats to what you gave me the other day. I'll let you know how many when I go through the box. <laughs> so. Well, I'm going to sign off, ladies. Yes. I'm going to go, my mail is here, believe it or not, and it's not even dark. So I do want to get, <laughs> Maybe so get it before it gets dark. Yeah, I actually got mail today, too. It came about an hour or so ago. Yeah, I looked out and I want to, my, since it's been raining, I'm sure it's, it's probably wet, but I want to go out and get it. Everybody have a great week. And Bye. Bye. Stay Thanks, well Kathy. Safe. Bye -bye. I'm going to talk to you later. Bye. 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 I'm gonna go Bye. too. Bye. 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 Who else left? I'm gonna we leave. A lot of people. We've had a few people Up drop off. And, 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 oh, we See were up later. To seven, so. Yeah, we had about 38 people join our meeting today. So yes. we we had more today than we've had in a while. So that was nice. Let me call Katie. Right. Let her know. So I got here and I got here in the through. beginning, but I Bye couldn't God. figure out how to Bye get on. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm doing one in two weeks and we can talk. <laughs> I'm gonna take off two ladies. It was nice. Bye, Linda. Bye. 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 I guess we're just down to one screen now. So as soon as yep. we get a hold of Katie, maybe we can tell her to I'll we're do gonna it. You guys want to okay. leave. I'll do it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All righty. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and sign off too. It's good to see you guys. I should yes. sign up. I should. Thank you. All bye right. Bye. 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 See. I have my new directory. Where is it? I have it here. It was just right here. No, oh, here we go.
Katie, it's Mary Fisher. Uh, okay, everybody's leaving the meeting, and since you're the host, you have to end it. Oh, God. Okay. She didn't mention that. Okay. Okay. Let's just leave it and you'll end it when you get home. Okay. Well, I hope you're feeling better. Oh, God. Yeah. They're horrible. I hate them. I absolutely hate them. So, and, and your mom's sick too? Yeah. Well, if it get, doesn't get better, if it gets worse, take her to the ER. Yeah, I will. Okay. Because that well, I can't think of her name. She was knitted at Curious Crafters. She thought she just had a sinus infection, and so did her doctor. They didn't test her, and it was COVID. So. Okay. All righty. Thanks. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye. All right. Let me see what her email is. K-A-J Holly at Gmail. And Gerda. Gerda. Mm. Change name.
Gerda, it's Mary Fisher. I was just um, going to let you know that the meeting ended a little early. People were tired and wanted to get dinner going and stuff. So didn't want you to feel like we all left you there. So um, I'll talk to you later. Have a good evening. Bye. <laughs>